What's up, y'all? It's your boy Q from Clearing the Air Podcast. Hey, Mother's Day is right around the corner. This year, what we wanted to do is we wanted to shout out grandmothers, right? We know that their grandmothers a different role, but for many of us, our grandmothers have played such a pivotal role that they could be recognized on Mother's Day and Grandparents' Day. But for many of us, our grandmothers have been like mothers. In fact, oftentimes they've raised us either in the absence completely of our biological mothers or in unison with them. They was they were so much a part of our lives growing up that whenever mom wasn't there, grandma was there. So, yo, we want y'all to just talk to us, man. Have y'all had a special moment? Is there a grandmother that you really love? Help us shout them out. Welcome to the Clear in the Air podcast with D and Q. I'm D. I'm Q. Hey, man. It's Mother's Day. It's right around the corner. And as usual, we want to take the time out to celebrate moms um, as men. I think any opportunity that we get to shout out the ladies, especially those that have, who have had a very great impact on our life, um, they should come easy. So we're taking a different spin. I think the first year, season one, we talked about our mothers. Season two, we talked about stepmothers and the impact and the role that they have. What we have not talked about, okay? This is kind of a different thing we're going into is grandmothers. Now, some of us that rings a little bit more true as mothers, some of us, they're grandmothers, but grandmothers in an aspect that have played such a heavy role in our life, that they may have been a second mom, okay? Um, Or have played that traditional role, which we'll talk about a little later. So yo, um, as kind of like an intro to our grandmothers, talk to me about your grandmothers. How many you have, how many you still have? Talk to me about that. Okay. Um, Well, I, I had two, unfortunately both are, have passed away. Um, I, I normally talk more so about my dad's mom, but I want to talk a little bit about my mom's mom first. Um, Cause she was such a sweet lady. Um, she did pass away though, while I was, I was young. So I do have some memories, but not as m- as many memories as I do with my dad's mom. But um, I just remember such a sweet lady. She drove like this little blue car uh, like a typical grandma, we think she always had a bunch of change. <laughs> always had change, whether it was in the car or around the house. Um, she babysat me um, a couple times, a few times. Well, probably more than a few times. But I just remember she was such a sweet lady. And I remember when she passed away, I, I, I learned later when I got older that she passed away from cancer. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, cause I remember when she passed away, I was like, what, what, what happened? Cause it, it seemed to have just come out of nowhere. And then I, I think my parents maybe didn't want to tell me at the time, but when I got older, they told me, and it, my, my grandmother kind of kept it a secret. She really didn't tell a lot of people. So I don't think a lot of my family knew. Um, but yeah, I definitely find memories of my mom's mom, my grandmother. And, and both of them, both of them, I remember I was living in New Jersey at the time. So I'm gonna talk about my dad's mom, my grandmother. That's the one I remember more vividly because I spent more time with her. And also she died when I was at a, a, a later, a later age. I'm again, growing up in Jersey. I just remember she was a very spiritual woman. She was that spiritual grandmother that you kind of think about. Um, you know, always going to church, always talking about God and this and that. Um, but such a and just such such a sweet lady, well respected. She loved her family. She loved her kids. She loved the grandkids. Both my both my grandmothers did. Um, and I just remember as she got older, a lot of my family in Jersey, they started to move down to the Atlanta area. We had, my family and I, we had kind of moved out earlier but a lot of my later in life a lot of my family had moved down to the atlanta area and i remember the big thing was we got to get 
grandma out of Jersey. Got to get grandma out of Jersey. We finally got her down to the Atlanta area. And she loved it down there. They they are originally from North Carolina, the country anyway. So, um, yeah, man, just a sweet lady, man. Like I said, very spiritual. Um, just loved her family. She loved me. I loved her. Uh, I would like to, I always used to think that I was her favorite grandchild, but she loved everybody. I, I bet a lot of uh, my other cousins would beg to differ. Uh, and it's funny because I think my dad always felt like <laughs> he was her favorite child. And I'm sure a lot of his siblings, my aunts and uncles would beg to differ. But she just loved us. She just loved our family, man. She just such a sweet lady. Very important to me. I know I've, I maybe said it before, but she is still um, my screensaver on my phone to this day. So, yeah. How about you? Man, for me, um, I got to say that I've been blessed um, in the grandmother arena. So I have my mom's mom. Okay. I have my dad's mom. I had my great grandmother who was instrumental great grandmother on my mom's side. And I have my stepmother's mother. Okay. And so literally talking about four, three of them who are still living, great grandmother passed away. And the dope thing with my with my great grandmother is that the same hospital that she passed away in. It's the same hospital that my daughter was born in. Wow. So it's kind of dope. And then it makes me think back to a picture that I took. I brought my daughter. She couldn't have been no more than she. I don't even think she was six months. And I brought her over to the crib in Baltimore. And I literally have the picture where it's like three generations. It's my great grandmother, my grandmother. And then my great grandmother, like she had arthritis really bad in her in her hand, so she couldn't grab like she wanted to. But she uh, she was holding her as best as she could on her lap. And what was dope is that she was smiling like my daughter. So it's just like that's that's crazy. As far as the other grandmother, so um, both my mom's mom and my dad's mom, they're both eighty eight, and my. Um, Step grandmother, I hate saying that step stuff, but my step grandmother, she I believe is eighty two, so I got three grandmothers living in their eighties. I think that's a, a tremendous blessing at this stage in my life. So, yeah, so that's the intro to the grandmothers, man. Shout out to all of those grandmothers who are still alive, still being a part of our lives, and shout out to those who have gone on to be with the Lord. Which brings us to the next thing. And I'll ask this question, what role has your grandmother or grandmothers played in your life? Um, I mean, they, they were just, it was a huge role, bro. And again, like I said, I normally talk about my dad's mom. And that's just because I, I have more memories of her and she lived yeah. longer. Um, but they both played a, a pivotal role, man. Like I said, I was, Growing up in Jersey, both my parents were working hard. So there were times where I would have to stay with them. Um, so they was that, that, you know, that parent, that extended parent, which most, you know, grandparents are. Um, I think the biggest thing, just seeing them, seeing how uh, motherly they were, how well respected they were, how spiritual they were, uh, you know, I, I just remember my my dad's mom, my grandmother, I remember this vividly. She would say her her one wish before she passed away, she wanted all her kids to be safe. And not to get too, you know, spiritual, but that was that was that was her desire. And I can say that, you know, before she passed and since she's passed, that that wish came true and still is true. So but, um, but yeah, I just remember, man, every time I would see her before I leave, she would always say, you know, I'm praying for you. You know what I mean? And even, even as I, I got older and, you know, I kind of had that reputation of, 
you know, just living a great life and always on the go and traveling and doing all this and that. She would just always say, I'm praying for you. I just, I remember that. So she was definitely that, 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 that's that spiritual aspect in my life. Um, just to know that, uh, you know, when I would be out and, and doing different things, just know that I had a praying grandmother. We, we, we hear that, that, that slogan, having a praying grandmother. So that was definitely evident in my life. That's what's up. I ain't gonna lie to you, man. This is a this is an emotional one. Uh, I'm sure for the both of us, maybe in different ways and, and the same ways. So for my great grandmother, the role she played in, like when you say big mama, like you gotta remember she had 13 kids, a whole rack of grandkids, and a whole rack me of great grandkids um so talking about a lot of people and and she had a what three bedroom house you might even call it a townhouse row house you know how they are in baltimore with a basement bro you needed a place to sleep needed a place to come to when you came to baltimore and oftentimes you know um the family reunions are huge in my family we have two of some so it, it was like her house with the hub. You know, you talk about Atlanta, Atlanta being a hub, like her her house was the Baltimore hub. You know, um, you know, I, I just it, it, it just it it just the role she played was like family, like like the glue to the family. Mm -hmm. My mom's mom. So this is where it gets a little bit emotional, bro. The role she had was the traveler. She traveled. We talked about this in the, in the episode we did. Uh, in, I think it was season two where we talked about travel. And I shouted her out because it would be Amtrak from Boston to Baltimore. And then that was the, she was like the liaison of the family reunion. So like I was at him at a young, as a young child. So like my traveling, I really, the knack for that I got from her. Like I really feel like I got what my career started out to be from her um, just because of what I was introduced to. My um, and I used to stay with her like when my mom was working when I was young in the medical field. I would, we would stay with her like every weekend, so it was something that I look forward to. I think I said this before like, she was like the Disney Plus before it even came out. Every VHS that was Disney, like, we had it. As far as my dad's mom, it was kind of like the same thing to a degree, just a lot less than my mom's mom, where you know that was the house to go to, like, it connected my dad's side of the family, you know, my cousins, which, you know, was dope because I got a cousin who's a day young, older than me. So a lot of times we would connect with those two, her two younger siblings. So that's, that's, that's that role, man. It's just, like you say, very pivotal in, in what they did for us. I got a question and this kind of takes the focus off of us for a minute. Might be phrasing this wrong, but what do you see in terms of grandmothers now? And, and, and let me give the context. We're having children at young ages, which means mm -hmm. you're having younger grandmothers. Mm -hmm. It's The question is not meant to say what you prefer. It's not meant to say what is better. It's not meant to pass judgment. But what do you see when it comes to that? Well, I mean, like you said, bro, it, it seems like it, in this generation, grandmothers are younger. Uh, just because they might have had children young, or might have had them at a at a you know at the I hate to quote unquote normal age, but maybe their child had a child young. So you know it's that running joke, grandmother like 38, 39, 40. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you want grandma to watch the kids. She's like, no, nah, I'm going out. <laughs> oh, I'm. <laughs> So, you know, it, but that's, you know, that's, that's just a stereotype, you know what I mean? It does exist. You know what I mean? We're not going to act like it doesn't, but um, I would like to believe that the role of the grandmother uh, is the same. I believe, you know, they might, even though they may be younger, I feel as though they, they love their grandchildren. Um, I think you sent me something or we was reading something about the bond between a grandmother and their grandchildren how sometimes it may be stronger than the bond they've had with their own children. Um, so I would like to 
you know, think that the impact is the same. I know these times, you know, are different now, you know what I mean? And so there's a lot, lot going on. Um, you know, the society has changed, bro. The world is different. Um, but I will say this, my friends that have kids, I know they lean heavily on their grandparents. Um, whether it's, you know, just, just advice, uh, babysitting, it, it may be, it may be, uh, education you know a lot of kids now are, are are staying at home being homeschooled um especially post pandemic and so I, I know that grandparents do play a pivotal role just like when we was growing up i think the only thing that the age thing does is maybe change maybe what you do mm -hmm. with that child you know more than likely you're not gonna have like our grandmothers weren't out there running around in the parks with us Mm -hmm. You know, we pull up to the crib and that's where we're at for, you know what I'm saying, for the weekend. Right. You know, we're doing stuff in the house, maybe, you know, maybe we go, maybe we go somewhere, you know, but it's not. Definitely going to church. Definitely going to church. <laughs> definitely going to church. Right. Because it was Don't more come over there without your church clothes. Right. Because more than likely it was a weekend situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, again, you were, might not have, you might have got there Friday night, you know. Saturday might, you know, you might have done, you know, some of the in the house stuff. Maybe you went to a park or something, you know, but it was, if you did that, it was probably other people involved where it just wasn't grandma. Now with the young grandmothers, the what you might call the non-traditional situations, you know, shoot, they may be on social media with their grandmates. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it may be a situation Might where, have a bigger following than them. <laughs> Uh, uh, she's showing you how to post on TikTok. But I mean, I just think it, it's just, I think we have to be careful. And, and the question wasn't posed to judge. It was more or less to just say how times have changed. And we got to acknowledge that because, you know, that stuff, it you, it's visible. You know, it's we're not reality. Gonna act, yeah, we're not going to act like it's not happening. Um, right. That's not to say that there's any love law so that we prefer either or better. Well, I got another question. And I think this one is, this is where it starts to hit home. What would you say is your most impactful moment from either of your grandmothers? Oh man. Well, I'm gonna give you three. Um, one is gonna be uh, before she passed away and two is gonna be after. Um, I mentioned, one early and I was, you know, every time I, I left her presence, she would always say, I'm praying for you and I love you. So I, I just always remember that in her voice. The first thing I would say, I remember we, uh, she was in Atlanta, we was here. And I remember, you know, we had started to get word that she wasn't doing too well. And I'm talking about my dad's mom. We started to get word that she wasn't doing too well. and. Uh, you know, from here to Atlanta, it's a pretty, pretty long drive, but we, we would do it. Um, and so I never forget it was on New Year's Day. I, it might have been, it might have been January 2nd. Um, my family and I, we had decided that we was going to drive down to Atlanta just to, you know, see grandma. And uh, I remember my, the woman who I was dating at the time, she was able to ride down with us. And when I saw my grandmother, it, it was, I didn't know it at the time, but it turned out to be the last time I would see her. She passed away in, in February. So this was January. But just to have that opportunity to see her one last time, again, even though I didn't know it would be the last time at the time, but you know, just to be able to see her a month before and, um, it was important. I remember it was important for me at the time with the woman I was dating because she had heard so much about my grandmother, you know? And um, so for her to meet her and to see exactly what we was talking about, and she loved her just like she was one of, <laughs> you know, my grandmother loved the woman I was dating at the time, like she was one of her own grandchildren. And I just remember she sat there and, uh, the young lady held my grandmother's hand and, 
you know, it, it was just, a, it's actually the moment, the picture on my, my screen saved, that was actually the last time I uh, got to see her, but it was just, it was just dope in that moment, you know, to see, for somebody to see the person I was talking about, and for me and my family, more importantly, me and my family, to see her that last time. Um, I, I'll just never forget that moment. It was, it was a great way to start the year, but then looking back on it, it was just like, man, this is really how the year going to start. I'm going to, you know, lose my grandmother. So that was definitely, definitely a huge memory. Um, the two memories I have after she passed away, um, the first one was the funeral. And I just remember it was so many people there, man. It was so many people. And obviously my family from all over was there. Um, but just to see, you know, how many people loved my grandmother, man. It was just, it was just amazing to see. Um, and it was tough. I'm not going to lie. It was tough just because, you know, it was one of those things to where, you know, she, she was, she was one of those people that even though she was up in age, you, you never thought it would be a day when she wouldn't be here no more. You know what I mean? Like, you knew she would eventually pass away, but you thought she would never pass away, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? And so, um, and I'll never forget, uh, I have a cousin that lives down there that I'm really close to. Shout out to Tasha, my cousin Tasha. And I'll never forget, she said something, she was like, Man, she, she, I forgot how she worried, but she was like, it's going to be a sad day when grandma leave us. And we both was just like, yeah, it, it, like we, we just couldn't fathom it. And, you know, it was kind of, I hate to bring in Kobe, but you know how like when Kobe passed away, we was like, it's Kobe. Like he not here no more. It's kind of like that with my grandmother. Like, you know, nah. So, and, and I'm going to try not to get emotional just thinking about it, but. I just remember the ceremony and it was definitely a celebration of life. We definitely had church up in there. It was not your traditional uh, funeral. And my last memory, um, after she passed away, you know, the, the family had vowed to, you know, spend more time together, start having more family reunions. Um, and so we had started doing them, I believe every other year. And so we had, the last one we had, it was actually, it was in Atlanta. It was in Atlanta. And um, shout out to my family down there. They did an excellent job putting it together. And they had these little like gift bags for everybody. And uh, it was a t-shirt in there. And I'll never forget, it was a purple rubber band. So purple is my grandmother's favorite color, hence why I'm wearing this. I'm wearing this for her. And I don't know if y'all noticed, but I've always had two Band-Aids on my wrist. I've had obviously the, the clear and the air one, and then I will always have a purple one. And so that purple one was for my grandmother. I put it on the day they gave it to her. And this was this is about five years ago. This was five, six years ago. This was pre-pandemic because we were supposed to have a couple during the pandemic and we did. But I, I put that purple Band-Aid on and I wore it and I never took it off never since i had it and just last week it popped on me bro it popped just last week uh it popped on me crushed crushed bro i mean i, I never took this band up never well playing basketball traveling in the shower i never took this band off and so it popped on me last week and i was devastated so call my cousin i was like cuzzo Please, please tell me y'all got another Band-Aid left. Please tell me y'all put some to the side and just our luck. My aunt, her mom had some and it's in the mail as we speak, bro. So, so yeah, those, those are, those are the, uh, the, the three biggest memories I had. Oh, I got another, I got another. I remember in Jersey, bro, you know, she, she didn't live in the best area in Jersey. Um, and then, but she moved to a, a senior citizen, like a building. It was a building, much better area, right across from the park. But I remember she would just walk up and down. She would walk everywhere in Jersey. And you know, Jersey ain't the safest place, though. And she would just walk everywhere in Jersey, and speak to everybody, and everybody respect her, and nobody would ever think to mess with her. 
uh, I, I just I just remember that. And I was like, man, this, <laughs> this lady just walking. She has she was so full of life, so full of energy. It was just it was just amazing to see. How about you, bro? I know, bro, I know. Trying to trying to trying to trying to brace myself, man. Cause yeah. you know, you it's not easy by any means for you because they've been gone for some time. So I'm gonna start uh, with my great grandmother. I I kind of said it earlier. That moment, that picture that I have of my daughter and my eleven year, my twelve year old. Her birthday was on Tuesday, so my twelve year old. Her with um like just having a picture with the two generations. Right. Um, granted, she wasn't old enough to, you know, make much of it. But uh, just that, that was the, that was like a great moment. So that had to be for my great grandmother for, I'm gonna start with my dad's mom. So it's kind of like really recent memories with the last two grandmothers because my grandmother, my dad's mom, she's 88 and she has like a really bad knee, bro. Like joints swole up, hard for her to walk. But you know, grandmothers be, and they, 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 you can't hold it down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're not gonna stop them. Like they stay, it, they could be, it's when they're stubborn in a good way, it's cool. Cause like, they just got that will to live. Mm -hmm. Um you know, keep her own house clean. You know, she got mad stairs in her place too. Shout out to my uncle because she's getting ready to move and in, into his basement. And the basement ain't is not a regular basement, bro. Like he made an entire like apartment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, like she got her own entrance, all of that. Real though. But and um in uh April, man, I got the opportunity to go up there. Um, for my dad's birthday uh, that weekend and see her get ordained as a minister. Just, I mean, that that had to be just so dope because she's gone through so much with the surgeries and just in her, in her, in her mortal body and her physical body. It's been tough, but spiritually, man, she's still, she's still kicking. And I think that's really what's keeping her from not you know, being depressed and all that other stuff. But shout out to my grandmother, Grandma Peggy, man, for uh, just just holding it down, man, and still pushing on for the Lord, even in her age, there's still work to be done. Um, in regards to my mom's mom, man, it's, it, it gets real tough because I started to tell the story. But so last year, I just felt led by God, man, to really just get to Boston. And like just spend time with her. And I didn't tell her. I just pulled, I just pulled up on her. She's like, what are you doing here? Like, I'm here for you. I'm here for you. So, you know, I got I got videos, I got pictures, I got all of that. I have videos on my phone because she wanted to get something to eat. So we walked down the hill. You want to talk about somebody that walked? Bro. And the hill, like she lives at the top of the hill. And to get down to where everything is, like she still gets was getting on buses, everything. Well, anyway, um, I, I just record for hours, just hours. Um, you know, so I recorded on my phone, I was going down the hill, I recorded on the camera, just us talking, um, her giving me history, because she's from North Carolina too, um, Raleigh Durham area. So just dope, you know, seeing her give me all that information as much as she could. Well, fast forward, man, to um, 2023, man. And she was she was down doing her thing, man. And she um, she had a stroke, bro. Had a stroke in a uh, grocery store. So um, what sucks, man, is, she, you know, she made it through, bro. But she's not the same, bro. She's not the same. She just got back to the crib, um, to her apartment, you know, and it's just, it's just, my sister has gone there. It's just not the same. But I say all that to say, I think probably the most memorable is what happened last year because it really, um, like I, that, 
I think that's the last of her being in that state of mind mm -hmm. um, that I was able to record and I have for a long time. So, um, yeah, man. So that's the three uh, memorable situations. Actually, there's four, like you just said, and that's my step um, step grandmother. And shout out to her because she, when I was going through my divorce, you know, I never forget. I went up to my mom and dad's. Um, in Delaware and you know, we just get to talking about stuff and you know I kind of felt felt bad because you know when you leave the home and you kind of feel like you're breaking up your family like she just reminded me over the years of what she's seen in me and how I raised you know not just my daughter but her two her older two sisters too so Sometimes, man, just like we look at them and we say like their history, but they they hold a lot of history in terms of just like everything, what's happened in the world, what's happened in their lives, and what's happened in our lives as well. So things that we don't think are significant, like I just was reminded. So um, those are my four most memorable moments, man. Um, you know, and I know, you know sometimes you feel like or you want to kind of speak and get through the podcast, you know, and do whatever, but like stuff like this, man, I just wish, you know, you, you, you don't have enough time to talk about these moments. So um, I you think know, this was, it's, it's no rush, bro. Get it out, bro. Get it yeah, out. Bro. Bro. It, uh, yeah, you bro. know, we can, yeah, bro. this is what it's here for. This is what it's here man. for. And if we can't do it on here, what can we do it? That was the reason we right. started this whole thing because we had these right. honest and, great conversations among between Word. each other and we wanted to get it out to the Word. masses so and i mean I, I think a lot of people can relate and if, if you've had a grandparent and they're no longer here uh you know yeah man and what's crazy is with your journey with your grandmother you kept me updated with it and so i've kind of been on this journey with you you know what i mean i remember Word. i remember Word. When we went to boston and and you know and you sent me the uh, the footage of that, and uh, it's, it's kind of similar to my situation. You know what I mean? Just going, just popping up and seeing her, and you know, you you'll always remember that man. Just remember, she's still here. Um, she may not be the same, you know, physically, but you know, God got her, bro, and uh, she's in yeah. a good place with your uncle, and you know, your family's up there, definitely going to take care of her. Right. And I know you. You're going to try to you know, get up there as much as you possibly can. Yeah. And it's not easy, but I know, I know you've been sacrificing to making that trip. So, so yeah, man. you know, I'm here for you. You know, your wife and your family's there for you. And uh, yeah, man, she, yeah. she's, she going to be all right, bro. She going to be all yeah. right. We, if we don't believe then come on, you know what it is. Well, yo, speaking of, you know, Kind of a good segue to the next thing before we clear the air. Uh, I, I will ask this: like, what's one moment or what's one um, thing you wish that either of your grandmothers were had it been a part of in your life that they were not? Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not married and I don't have any children yet, bro. So those are two things I would have loved for them to have you know, experience. So that, that's the major thing, but they, they seen me graduate, you know, twice. <laughs> uh, I mean, my, when I was younger, they seen me graduate, but and then they seen me graduate college twice, um, you know? So I, I, that would be the biggest thing, man. That would be the biggest thing, but you know, they've, they saw a lot of my, my family married. They saw a lot of, you know, their grandchildren. So, um, yeah, th that would be the biggest thing, man. But just, you know, I, 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 like I always say, you know, I take my, my last name very seriously. And a lot of that is just because, you know, I, I have so much respect for my parents and my grandparents. Bro. So I try to uphold that last name and whatever I do. So, so yeah, man, um, you know, and, you know, I, I'm starting, it's crazy, an honesty moment right here, I'm starting to, not even starting to, but you know, I have those thoughts when it comes now with my parents, 
you know what I mean? Um, just, you know, I want them to experience seeing their child get married, and have grandchildren, you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. My, my mom's mom, what I would have loved for her to be a part of was my second marriage, the wedding. My dad's mom was there. So the, we got married on April 29th. Her birthday is April 15th. And what my mom's mom used to do when her, when my great-grandmother was alive is she would come down for her birthday and spend a couple of weeks. Well, you know, when you get 80-something years old, man, it's one thing to travel around the city. It's another thing to travel, you know, for long periods of time, mm -hmm. you know, on buses and trains because couldn't get her on a um, on a on a plane bro <laughs> so um yeah so i do wish that um she had been a part of that you know when i look at the video for our anniversary we looked at the whole video and um i saw my my uh my my dad's mom in, but uh not my mom's mom so that's one thing i wish um can I say one more thing? I, yeah, I, it's just a couple memories <laughs> just popped up, man. I remember I got two. You know, I growing up, I, I traveled a lot, and uh, you know, I'm thankful for my parents for taking me around to see the world. And whenever they went somewhere, they took me with them. Um, two memories, traveling memories. Uh, one, I remember one year family reunion, we went to California. Uh, my family out there, shout out my uncle and cousins, Uncle Matt, cousin Kim and Karen, and their kids. Um, and so we all went out there to the Bay Area. And uh, I remember that. Um, dude, that's actually the first time my best friend Larry got on a plane. <laughs> he had never been on a plane before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I remember that with grandma. And uh, two, we went on a cruise, like a family cruise. And that was that was super dope. And uh, you know how you take the pictures on cruises. And I remember they yeah. had, they had my grandmother and all her children in the picture on the cruise. And I think I think they were in white. I can't remember. Like just but just nice dressed up. And uh, my my parents have all those pictures like up on a shelf and on the wall at their house. And whenever I go and visit them, I see all these pictures, and it's like nostalgia just seeing them. Like yeah, I remember, you know. And so. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, I, I just had to get that out real quick. You know, just thinking about it, and just remember positive, not even positive, like you just remember certain moments and those two just popped up, you know, just traveling and stuff. You know, man, we probably could have just did this entire episode on just memories. Yep, yep, and, for sure. And I, and I think, you know what, man, I would love to do, and I would, it would be cool to even, you know, do that with you. It's just say, all right, Grandma One, Grandma Two, or Grandma Joe, Grandma May, mm -hmm. and just just go down with the memories. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And I mean, man, we probably be writing for hours or days, or you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So uh, I definitely think I want to do that at some point soon. Well, I got another one. Got another one. <laughs> I, I knew you would. would. I knew you would. I just want to say, with my mom's mom, I remember how much. My dad respected her. And I remember how much she loved my dad, you know, for like the way he, he treated her daughter. Um, I, I, just, I remember that. I remember that about my mom's mom's grandmother. Um, you know, and that was very important. And shout out to my dad because he he's like the ultimate example of you know, how to treat your OG. wife. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gee, pops. OG. Yeah, man. So, all right, I think I'm done. I think I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we could take it offline. I guess I didn't really finish the rest of my grandmothers, but I just, I, it's so many things. Man, I think if I had to go back, let me go back. If I had to, with my great grandmother, my grandfather was a minister. And so I think what I would have loved to have seen or for her to see is, you know, me being in the ministry now. Um, she might not have understood the online stuff, but. You know, you you take your phone and you show her somebody preaching. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because it's 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 in the blood. It's it's, it's legacy. Right. So I, I would have loved for her to seen that. 
I think in terms of my dad's mom, what would I have loved for her to see um, or be a part of? I think just a lot of the day-to-day stuff, just because she is, you know, both both of both my mom's mom and my dad's mom, they're, they're both in Boston, but I feel like because my dad is closer to me here in Delaware, let's say if I if, if she lived down here, a lot of situations she would end up seeing and being part of. So like if my dad came down, she could probably come there. Um, so just kind of probably day-to-day stuff. I think I spent a lot more time day-to-day with my mom's mom. I didn't do so much of that with my dad's mom as much. So I think more of the day-to-day stuff with her. But yeah, man. So as we, you know, clear the air, we know that all you guys who have grandmothers that are still here, still with us, still with you, or that have gone on, you, you, you just cherish the moments. Mm-hmm. You want more of them if they're not here anymore. And uh, just, just this Mother's Day, man, we wanted to shout out the grandmothers because they're the mothers 2.0. They were mothers to our parents. And them being mothers to our parents, we see some of them and our parents and how they raise us. And it's just, I think it's so dope to see how, based on that article that I showed you, I, I've never understood it, but I think the article was saying that grandparents, grandmothers, they're able to, I guess, be more empathetic. Like they can understand, they can empathize with how you feel mm-hmm. uh, more so than what they can because they didn't have to discipline you. They didn't have to raise you, mm-hmm. so to speak. So I can empathize with you a little bit more because I didn't have to go through that process. So it's like, you're not my child, but I see my child in you. So I, mm-hmm. I inherently love you. Mm-hmm. So it's just, you know, again, but shout out to the grandmothers, man. Shout out to the grandmothers, younger or older, who are helping to raise their grandchildren. Right. Shout out to those who have had to do it because their children weren't doing what they needed to do or weren't in the best positions. Um, so just shout out to grandmothers, man. Happy Mother's Day to you. Happy Mother's Day to our own mothers. Yep. Um, we love you. So that's, that's just the best way for us to say it. We'll never Happy forget Mother's you. Day to your wife. Happy Mother's Day to your wife. Word. Right. Word. Happy Mother's Day to my wife. Got a nice day planned for her. Right. Um, but man, we just, we, I can't say it enough. I can't say it enough. We love you. We miss you if you're gone. We miss you even if you're not gone. And like for me, my grandmothers are in a different state. Right. Two of the three that are alive. So, you know, that's that's tough. And given the situation that I'm currently dealing with, mm-hmm. makes it even tougher. But to God be the glory. And um, just, just grateful for them. So that being said, We want to ask you guys to make sure that you are following us all social media platforms, okay? Make sure that you are subscribed to our YouTube channel, which is growing by the day. Also, make sure that if you want that audio experience that you are on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, check out the full episodes for the audio experience there. Hey, listen, get to spend time with your grandmothers, your mothers, your loved ones, those you consider mothers. Spend that time with them because when the time's gone, that being said, we out. Peace.